gecko, as far as I can tell, looks far more like a skink to me, but one very, very, very cold little skink. Let me move your stick. There we go. Hi. I'm just using, uh, in theory, the warmth of my hands to help this poor little guy out. So this whole rescue mission started um, when I set out searching for the answer to Judy H's question, which was about whether or not the egg cases for the Lactrodectus geometricus, also known as the brown button spider, were anywhere around in the tent still, or if they had hatched. And in the box, I discovered this poor little chap, who is so cold, that's why it's being so docile, we never ever get a, a sort of an opportunity to handle these creatures in this way. And I really am, we've taken it out of the box, I really am just trying to impart a little bit of my body heat to this poor thing, because I think it's actually been stuck in that box, I don't think it could get out. And in the rain and everything, it probably found itself a corner and curled up there, and basically, because it's an ectotherm, like all reptiles, and with a particularly, if it were a gecko, it might be better off, because geckos actually have a slightly better control over their body temperatures than most ectotherms or most reptiles. But for the rest of them, the skinks and the lizards and so on, they obviously are somewhat dependent on external temperatures that determine their movements, which is why this little guy is being so still and cooperative. It has the most gorgeous sheen to its scales and a little droplet of water on your head, don't you? Everything about this creature is utter perfection. From its tiny, tiny little toes to each and every single minute shining scale to the little tip of its tongue that keeps flickering out. You can see its breathing's very slow. And that's because it is so very cold. Hi. Can you see that gorgeous sheen? It really is utterly stunning. Such perfect minute detail. Now I'm handling it very carefully. They don't like to be handled. And the only reason I am is first of all so that I could show it to you, but most importantly so that I could warm it up a little bit. Since it had fallen into a box, therefore it was a man-made obstacle in its life. So I figured the least I could do is offer it some body heat. Look at jeepers, that's very slow breathing for a lizard. Or for a, any reptile this size. So its entire metabolism is slowed down. Everything is happening at half speed for this little chap at the moment. And I don't know what it must think of us. But it just doesn't have the energy to run away. We've also got to be very careful because of something that happens with quite a few members of the lizard family and the reptile family, and that is the ability to sever their tail as a defense mechanism. So basically the tail drops off and sometimes even continues to wiggle around due to movement, and that distracts the potential predator, allowing the lizard or the skink to escape. And I don't want that to happen here. Oh, shame. Are you having a little sleep there? Or are you just resigned to your fate? Don't worry, I'm not going to eat you. See the little tongue popping out every now and again, taking in the scents around it, and then transferring, transferring them to the organ of Jacobson, which sits at the top of its mouth. Hi, you are utterly gorgeous. Look at the opening to the ears. You can actually see the opening to the ears there, behind the eye. And perfect five little toes, exactly positioned for gripping. I'm trying to hold it really steady for you. Of course, now I've thought about that. And the blink, the presence of those eyelids. Oh, there's the tongue again. Not forked, obviously, like a snake. Slightly different. Oh. Very slow movements right now. And Christina, while I'm being very hands-on, you want to know if we will ever help an injured animal or if it's hands-off completely. If it's a natural situation, it's hands-off completely. 
that is the standard policy of the reserve and the standard policy that we follow as guides and it's actually a very good policy even if it's very hard on us as individuals it makes total and utter sense when you think about it properly if the cause is anthropogenic in other words if it has been introduced by a human if the animal has been snared if it's been shot if it has contracted a disease from a domestic animal if it has fallen into a box and is unable to get out all of those are situations where we will intervene we will step in it's a difficult situation though because that line is sometimes very very difficult to draw but it's a good point and it's difficult for all of us and we offer it as an explanation i spoke about this yes no not yesterday the day before on one of the safaris about the fact that if we use the Styx cubs as an example, they contracted mange, so did the Inkahuma cubs. The Styx cubs didn't make it, the Inkahumas did recover, uh, white muscle disease aside, and that's quite a long story that I'm not going to fully go into at the moment. But the Inkahuma cubs have basically kicked their mange completely, the poor Styx cubs didn't. But what that does mean is that we've now got genetics flowing through the reserve that is slightly more resistant to mange outbreaks in the future, which is a very, very good thing, but it was awful for us to watch. It was absolutely horrible to see those poor little cubs suffering in the way that they were. But you can't intervene, you can't even intervene to euthanize in that situation because there might be one that survives. And in that situation, you've taken nature's control away from her. Oh, good morning. Are we waking up? I'm gonna try not to breathe on it because that's really going to upset it. Very good question, Alana. Lovely to hear your name once again. Alana, you want to know if there's a way to tell the age of lizards. I have absolutely no idea. Obviously, the different species reach different sizes, but I don't know their growth rates. It's a very, very good question. I don't, there's no way in sort of, in developmental terms, because they basically hatch as little miniature adults. So I can't think of something that might immediately stand out Good question though. I'm afraid to say I don't know much about aging lizards. But ask him, how old are you? Blink once for, wait, I don't quite know how we're going to do that. Shame, it's all right, gorgeous creature. I'm just gonna let it revive a little bit longer. I mean, really, my fingers are blue, so I don't know how this poor thing is going to try and extract any heat from my hands. But you can see breathing speeding up, or, or not. It does seem to be speeding up a little bit. Movements are back again. Here we go, little guy. And the sun's coming out. Hey, isn't that good news? The sun's coming out, which means we can put you somewhere where you can bask, which is, of course, what reptiles do when they need to warm themselves up and go and lie in the sun. And during winter, they estivate, which is more as a result of a lack of water than a lack of heat because it never really gets cold enough for them to actually hibernate but we do see far less reptiles during the, our chillier season which is of course what we're going into now i'm going to go and try and find a suitable place to release our little skink and see where it wants to go and warm up while i do that let's go and find out how brent's morning is going <laughs> 